All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hirose America's webinar, Getting Surgical Robots Up to Speed with Hirose's Innovative Connector Technology. Today, we have one of our technical market experts, Michael White, giving you insight not only into connector technology, but the direction of the medical robotics space and surgical robotics space. Michael has industry experience across targeted segments, both focusing on medical devices. He has a degree from University of Illinois of Chicago. Michael, you're becoming a familiar face uh, with Hirose recently, as we see you frequently in our, in our product videos. Connectors are becoming second nature to you. Um, I can't think of a better person to uh, kind of share their insight today. Um, so, welcome, Michael. Thank you for having me, Scott. Exciting to be here. Excited to talk about this technology. Surgical robotics is definitely an exciting space, and we think that we have a really cool category of connectors to talk about, and one that maybe engineers didn't know that we uh, that we offer. So we're happy to talk about it. Excellent. Okay, so first, why don't you give us a kind of a quick, a uh, little bit of a snapshot of history uh, on the space and where we see surgical robotics going. Right, surgical robotics as a means of operating through minimally invasive surgery. And minimally invasive surgery really starts to happen around 1970. Mm -hmm. And then the first operations being done with surgical robotics start to take shape in 1985. So since that time, as you can imagine, there's a lot of excitement. Is this new technology going to revolutionize the, the surgical suite? Is it going to revolutionize the surgical operations? And um, so with that said, uh, since that time, there's been a lot, of, a lot of innovation happening. Surgical robotics kind of being used across operations and many different operations. It's not uncommon to see a, a surgical robot dedicated to an operation like spinal surgery. Um, or even a multi-purpose robot as well. So there's a lot happening, um, and it's it's exciting amount of innovation. It's exciting to be talking about it, because this is really cutting edge space technology. I mean, we're on the leading edge of, of, of helping engineers and companies do things that have never been done before. So Hirose works with companies both across surgical robotics as well as medical devices in general. Where do you see, uh, or, or should I say, where do you think uh, Hirose sees this space developing? Yeah, so just from a purely connector technology and innovation company, I think that we're, we want to be a part of everything that happens within the surgical robotics space because this, as you mentioned, is cutting edge technology. We want to be a connector, a connector company that's helping to refine that technology and that's doing our part uh, in playing a role in that. So. Um, in terms of where we see it going, with the, with the way that technology is developing, with the way that imaging is becoming clearer and more quality, when we see the ability of technology to be, to be made smaller, with smaller electrical components inside of it, uh, it's exciting from a technological point of view and from a market point of view. Analysts also are predicting quite a big growth in this space through 2030, I think in 2030. The, comp the, the market could be valued around $14.5 billion. I think it's $14.3 billion. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of growth that's expected in this space. And again, just from a, a technology and innovation standpoint, it's really exciting, as mentioned. Okay. So let's jump next to uh, how can we help engineers in this space? What are the challenges engineers are facing when designing surgical robotics? So the challenges engineers are, are likely experiencing are, are many fold. There are probably many challenges that have come up. We want to focus on three main challenges. Okay. Here. And the way I'm going to frame it is in two parts of the application. You have the robotic side, mm -hmm. and then you also have the scope side with the imaging. There are challenges in both, and there's actually some, some interesting uh, crossover as well in some of these challenges that could actually be present in both parts of the application. The three that we really want to focus on and that we want to provide a solution to are the first being the space and size constraint. As you can imagine, a robotic arm, it's a very intricate piece of technology. There's a lot of narrow alleys ways in that, in that part of the technology, as well as an endoscope. You can actually just intuit that there's a, there's a need for micro electrical components in there. So that's the first of which. The second is the presence of electromagnetic interference and the issue of noise that can affect the quality of the imaging, that can interrupt the imaging, that can also affect all of the data happening um, from the robot to the surgeon. There's a lot of data that happens there. Um, 
So the presence of noise is an issue, and it's one uh, as well that we think that we can address. And then the third one is the demand for high-quality imaging, uh, which is a demand for high-speed transmission. Uh, and this is kind of piggybacking off of that second challenge. Um, so those are the three. These are the three that we really want to talk about today. Okay, great. Um, can you start to set up how Hirose can provide solutions to these challenges? So Hirose, many folks know we have all kinds of connector types. We have wire-to-board connectors, right. small to large. We have microboard to boards. We have circular input outputs, more ubiquitous input outputs, sure. USB and things of that. What engineers might not know is that we also offer an active optical category of, of connectors. Active optical is what we really want to highlight this time around because we think it's perfectly positioned to address those challenges. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And when I mention active optical, keep in mind that this is the E to O, O to E process. Gotcha. This is the process on the transmission side where an electrical signal is being converted into an optical mm -hmm. signal. And then we send it through a flexible fiber and then on the receiving side, you take that electrical signal and convert it back to optical. Mm -hmm. One thing to mention is that's all happening inside the connector via a chip that's inside there. Okay. So the issues that come with cleaning, polishing, aligning with fiber optics, we've solved those issues for engineers. Mm -hmm. And all that they're operating with is an electrical connector. It was really designed to, to operate like an electrical connector. So um, this is how we're how we're uh, providing for the for this space is active optical and we think it's we think it's quite well positioned excellent okay okay so perfect so so the active optical cabling is is, uh, is where we're kind of or not just active optical options is where we're going to go okay perfect so let's talk specifically about that first challenge that you mentioned of limited space and what that means for an electrical engineer when they're designing uh, when they're coming across the design challenge yeah so just to touch on that for a second, the, the size issue in surgical robots and also the broader technological space, things, things are getting smaller. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly a trend in the medical space. Um, and that's absolutely a trend as well, uh, or that can be expected to take shape in the surgical robot space too. So size and space. You think about a robotic arm, there's a lot of narrow alleyways within that robotic arm. There's a lot of a need for flexible electrical components and wiring throughout um, the, the robotic arm. When you're dealing with optical, specifically the, the, the connector that we're bringing to the table, we use an extremely flexible fiber optic uh, system, fiber optic. It's extremely flexible. So wiring that throughout the, the robotic arm, you're getting down to the, the essence of flexibility in a very intricate piece of technology, which is the robotic arm. So that's on the, that's on the fiber side. Mm -hmm. But on the connector form side, and this is kind of the exciting part, is that even from an electrical connector standpoint, the, the BF4M, which is that active optical connector, is extremely small. It makes a penny look big. Mm -hmm. That's the connector. The connector is extremely small. And um, especially compared to uh, an LC connector, which is a fiber optic connector, and an SFP, which is an active optical module. Mm -hmm. when, you when you look at that configuration on a board, the BF4M, which is what we're bringing to the table here, right. is is a lot smaller. I'll just put it that way. It's a lot smaller. And um, so that's a little bit about how we're addressing it from the BF4M side. Another key product that I just, or another key connector that I just want to touch on is something that we call the FJ. This is a micro feral joint connector. Mm -hmm. And just to, uh, just to kind of explain the basis of it, um, we saw that engineers were to join two pieces of fiber together. They were, it's called fusion splicing. They were melting it in order to join these two fibers together. Gotcha. To solve that, you have kind of a, a joint connector issue. So that this would allow you to, to connect and disconnect instead. Because in, if you're melting it together, if there's any damage in the fiber, you'd have to throw it all away. Mm -hmm. So there becomes this, this emphasis, let's have a connector so that you can connect and disconnect it. What we were seeing from amongst those connectors on the market is that they were too big for an endoscope. Mm -hmm. So we bring out the FJ connector. It's very tiny, and it's, it's perfect for the endoscope uh, market and that's what this joint connector this fj product is, is doing excellent so it sounds like we've got a great solution to help that that space challenge mm -hmm. yeah right. i think so. okay perfect all right the next challenge that you mentioned was electromagnetic noise so we know emi protection is really really critical in this space um it's really we have no room for error or delay can you talk briefly about how to 
to shield and protect um, from any signal interference that could hamper the, the imaging process. Right. And I think that this is what's going to really start to resonate with engineers is that okay. when you're dealing with optical, you're dealing with a solution that is not affected by the electromagnetic field. Sure. The, the difference between even microcoaxial cable uh, versus an optical fiber is, is vast. There's a big difference. And we have studies that have shown uh, in testing when you put a microcoaxial at 1.25 gigabits per second versus an optical fiber, the difference in electromagnetic interference is it's night and day, really. So as a solution, optical fiber and active optical with Hirose's connectors, it's, it's really addressing that challenge and, and putting it at the forefront of what the solution brings to the table. Excellent. Okay, um, we've talked about small spaces. We've talked about electromagnetic noise. So those were two of the, the challenges engineers uh, face when designing uh, uh, surgical robotics. Uh, can you talk about facilitating high-quality imaging and the requirements for high-speed transmission? I've also heard some talk about the value of haptic feedback. Yeah. Can you kind of address this in combination with the high-quality speed and imaging transmission? Yeah. This is a really good point. So on the imaging side, you talk about the need for high-quality imaging. Imaging, it, it goes to the essence of what minimally invasive surgery is all about. In a small incision, we want to put a, a small scope in and, and really be able to have a very clear picture of what's happening inside so that the surgeon can have a clear understanding of, of, of what he or she is doing. So. That's the high quality imaging demands high speed transmission. That's on the imaging side. In the robot, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, the need for haptic feedback. How can we allow the surgeon to have a, a true picture of what he or she's feeling when they're operating on a patient? Mm -hmm. The vibration feedback, a lot of real time data transmission is happening, mm -hmm. and there can't be latency issues with all of that data coming. And you need to know the location of the robotic arm. You need to understand what the instruments are doing and where they're doing it. At all, there's no. There's no room for error there. There's none. So um, that also gets down to what it is that our engineers had located with the development of this product. So our engineers found that there was a demand for high-speed transmission on internal wiring. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, there's also a demand for optical, right? There's, there's a demand for this optical. It's able to facilitate high-speed transmission for internal wiring. What can we bring to the table? How do you market an optical connector to electrical engineers? It's a difference in specialty. So I mentioned already, the, the optical interface component is happening inside the connector. So the, the connection is all electrical. The operability of the connector is all electrical. So that's where this product, this connector, this BF4M, really comes into play. Now, we talk about high-speed transmission. The connector is rated at 6.25 gigabits per second. So it's able to meet that spec that's needed. We also have a uh, latest iteration of the connector coming, we're hoping for the end of quarter two, and that should meet 10 and a half gigabits per second. And it's kind of the, the next step up from the BF4M. Uh, we have that coming at the end of quarter two. Mm -hmm. So we hope that it'll really help to facilitate not only the high, high quality imaging, but also all of the data that's being transmitted in the robotic side as well. So we've hit on all three of those design challenges, electrical engineers, could potentially face. I'm sure there's others, but those are really three critical um, ones. I think it's worth emphasizing that the thing that Hirose brings to the table is, is our knowledge to provide recommendations to electrical engineers in this space. Um, we could also provide insight into technology applications that go across spaces. So things we're seeing in other places that can come over to, to hear. So, so in addition to that, we can support um, the engineers in thinking through the manufacturing process. So from, from the expertise that Hirose can bring to the table, we kind of have all of these elements. We can, we can support an engineer in this space in addition to the, the connectors that make the technology come to life and work. Um, do, do you agree, kind of agree with that? Is there anything you want to add there? Yeah. So we talked about this very complex technology at a kind of helicopter view. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want engineers to reach out to us and we can get them in conversation with other engineers that are able to kind of walk them through the exactly. process. How do you design this product in, this connector into to your application? So just a few things to touch on in response to your point. Mm -hmm. We have a Many connector types I've noted that already, and we have a really cool piece of content. It's called the connector selector, and it's kind of a snapshot of the catalog that shows, that goes kind of in depth on many product series as well as how to 
um, locate where these products are in, a, in an application and the various components in an application. This is the connector selector. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great piece of, of, of content that we hope to be a, a resource for engineers. That's one thing. The second thing is, as part of this webinar, what it is that we, that we discussed was that we want engineers who sign up for a sample kit to have a sample kit mm -hmm. of this cool pro I love talking about this product. I've enjoyed learning about this Clearly. connector. Right. Um, <laughs> and I've, I've caught on to a bit of excitement when I talk to this, this connector with engineers as well. So we want them to see this connector. We have mechanical samples um, in a sample kit. I think that we're doing 20 of them for this webinar. Mm -hmm. um, we so uh, that's, that's, that's exciting. The third thing. I mentioned that this is a complex, this act of optical technology is, 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 a, is a complex technology. We have a design guide as well that we recommend folks go and read through. Um, so that's going to be attached via a QR code in the sample kit. We want, to, we want our engineers to, to look at that as well. And then the last thing that I want to mention is we have an evaluation kit program where we will lend an evaluation kit of this connector so that engineers can actually observe the technology and see what's happening there. And it's completely lent, it's, it's, a, it's a free option, gotcha. uh, but it's really designed just so engineers can, can really get a feel for what's happening with the technology in the hopes that it'll help to, to for, in their decision to see if they want to use the, the connector in their, in their application. Excellent, okay. Well, this has been a great conversation. Um, I think this is the perfect time to open it up for questions to our audience. Okay, so just to remind everyone, uh, don't be afraid, please throw your questions into the chat on the uh, computer. Um, we've already got a couple kind of queued up there, so, so drop your questions in there, um, and then we can answer, answer them directly for you. Also, I'll just remind you ahead of time, at the, after we're fun, done with Q&A, you'll see a slide that will come up that will have um, ways to contact Michael directly, and you'll also have a QR code for a form that you can can uh, can contact us directly. So we've got a couple mediums there. So let's 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 get going with questions here because we've got a couple lined up here already. So, do you have any specific precautions uh, that have to be taken in re uh, in relation to medical applications that involve risk to life? Mm. So yes, because medical class medical applications and devices can be classified from one to four, mm -hmm. and definitely as you reach the latter classifications, the three and the four, there are definitely protocols that Hirose takes uh, dedicated to those protocols. So we recommend that anybody um, that has questions or that has concerns about those that they that they contact their Hirose representative or salesperson in charge of, of the product as well. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Okay. Good. Uh, that was your first question. Let's see. Next question: um, Will Hirose? Um, I, well, I think I think we've touched on this one, but let's let's jump right to it. Will Hirose be offer be offering fiber optic connectors on the sample? <laughs> for, for, is that for samples or for just? No. Sure. The question is: Is will we be offering fiber optic connectors? And I think the answer to that is yes. 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 <laughs> we currently yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do, and that's that's kind of what this webinar was designed to, to discuss, and we're, we hope that, um, that engineers will, will reach out about those. Yes. Uh, next one. Uh, in cases where we need a tailored connector design, does Hirose does offer customized support? Yeah, yeah. So Hirose does do customize and partner with companies on connectors. Um, the best thing again to do is, is really just discuss with your Hirosa representative in order to kind of find out what can happen there. Um, there is kind of some business uh, elements is there as well that okay. just make sure that um, it makes sense from a partnership level, but that, that's all addressed with, with, you know, the higher that you go. Excellent. Okay. Uh, getting, getting really good questions here. Um, beyond active optical connectors, what other products from Hirose might we see that will enhance surgical robotic technology. Mm -hmm. So that can be, I kind of mentioned and alluded to some in the webinar, mm -hmm. um, but those that are kind of, we know that there's a lot of wire to boards in this mm -hmm. in this application. And so uh, we want to kind of leverage our, or we want to offer our wire to board options. And those can range from tiny micro wire to boards to more power 
bigger and larger wire to board connectors. So um, those are there. We have great input outputs. We have an IX industrial connector, which is next gen industrial ethernet, which is a great op option. Uh, we also have a USB-C connector. Um, there's, a, there's a lot that can fit in. And because of this, all of the development that's happening in this application, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of up to engineers to kind of, to, 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 you know, up to their design. And we want to make sure that we support. We have a, a, a very wide um, kind of categories mm -hmm. of connectors. So there's, there's a lot to, to discuss there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, we've, we've got a full complete line of that, that mm -hmm. uh, you know, would touch base across the entire, ro you know, the robotic device. True. So all the way up True. to the endoscope that we talked about and things yes. like that. But yeah, yes. we absolutely do have a, a really complete line that can help them at every space in there. Um, let's see what the next one is. Is there connections for power also in the same connector? That's a, that's a great qu question. You want to talk about both data transmission and power transmission um, mm. through the connectors? So that's one I would like a bit more details on. Okay. I want to, some more details about that question. Um, so I think it's on the, the last screen that they'll see. And that's my contact information yes. up on there. So email me, reach out to me about what it is that this question is regarding, and then um, we, can, we can further discuss. And then there's also a QR code that'll come up that'll take to a kind of a tech support chat page. And I think that'll be good to, to discuss that question, specifically what the specs that that person is, is looking at. Oh, this is a good one. Can you use the BF in other applications? Yeah, sure, mm -hmm. sure, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. So that 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 connector is fit for other other uh, optical uh, applications. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you have another power, and we may have addressed this already, but let me ask it just to, to be sure. As it is an active connector, what level of power consumption uh, does it have? That mm. might be a spec specific. It is. Okay. It is. And that's one I need to I need to okay. go do the legwork on in order to get that that information. Okay. So yeah. the the two questions that we had on the power, um, you're gonna see Michael's email come mm -hmm. up. So uh, what I would do is just shoot Michael an email out of that and we can get you direct answers to those those two questions. Mm -hmm. Let's see. That's a good question. Um, I do have a question that uh, came up mm -hmm. on uh, Hirose. Can you elaborate on Hirose's initiatives towards uh, sustainability? Um, you know, are, is there any kind of thought towards sustainable uh, products when we're designing uh, uh, medical robotic devices? Hmm. So generally, when talking about kind of sustainability mm -hmm. and, and questions, it's something that, that we do think a lot about. And I think the essence of a connector company is, is one that thinks about thinks about that because even when we talk about engineers that are in their device not using any connectors, their direct soldering or whatever the, whatever the case may be, um, what connectors really come and bring as an offering is the ability to kind of to, to replace, to repair the device easily if any, if any challenges arise. So the ability to say, okay, maybe we need to exchange the connectors or take out whatever is connecting via the connector instead of, instead of damaging or putting the entire kind of thing at risk. Right, right. So, as a connector company, I think it's kind of built into to the essence of what we do. And then um, what Hero said, I've, I've, I've alluded to it, is really good at is packing in a lot of current into a small space, is really making technology smaller. Um, and so part of the way that we do that, I'll just give one example, is like a hybrid board-to-board -board connector where you have power and signal in one connector. And we have excellent series. I recommend everybody look up the FX23. It's mm -hmm. one that I love talking about as well in the board-to-board -board space. Um, we're not the only one to offer hybrid board to boards, but um, what that is doing is essentially taking two connectors. One would be power, one would be signal, bringing gotcha. it into one connector. Gotcha. And then uh, right then and, and there, that's cost savings, there's space savings. Again, it's, it's making technology smaller. So um, there's, there's a lot of ways to answer that question of environmental sustainability, but I think that it's something that Hirose is, is absolutely thinking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um... Actual fiber interconnects. Uh, so there's a question here, and I think this is coming back to uh, the comment on uh, offering fiber optic connectors. Uh, are there actual fiber interconnects within the connector? Does that make sense? I'm not sure what it okay. means. Okay. Okay. The actual fiber interconnects to do this one. Yeah. So let's 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 double check that question. Um, the the person if you, the person that kind of was referring to that. Uh, 
that if you could uh, shoot us an email on that one and we can get back to you with a direct result on that one. Let me see if I missed any questions here. Oh, uh, uh, there, here, there's, there's a great one here. Uh, how or whom do I contact or request the sample kit that, uh, that we just mentioned a little, little bit ago in today's discussion? So they, they can reach out to me okay. on the email address at the, on that ending slide and or the QR code that comes up, it'll take to a, a tech support mm -hmm. kind of contact us page. So those are good, good locations. Perfect. Okay, yes. perfect. I'm excited about the sample kit. Okay. I'm going to give folks one second if there's any other questions. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, the person that, ans that, uh, that asked that fiber optic question, we have your, have your, 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 your name here. We'll reach out to you on that one. So that's perfect. I don't have any additional questions. So I think we'll wrap up today's session. So I just want to take a moment to, to thank you, uh, Michael. This has been really an informative and interesting webinar. Uh, and so thanks for spending the time uh, to talking with us today. And, and we really appreciate uh, everyone joining us today. So yes. Um, you're going to see a slide that's going to come up right next uh, uh, that's going to have the contact information for Michael as well as a QR code. We'll leave that on the screen uh, that you can complete the contact us form. So everyone have a great day and thanks for joining us. Take care.